What's going on, creators? Yeah, just want to get on here and uh, bring everybody back to now. <laughs> Appreciate y'all being here and vibing with me for a bit. Yeah, today I'd like to talk a little bit about um, the concept of the familiar past and how we can start to use that concept to explore the uh, the unknown, having a hopeful future instead of like the uh, the repetitive cycles of trauma and just hopeless attitudes, worst case scenarios, and just mental dramas and fear, uh, ultimately, that can kind of just cripple our here and now um, moment. And so looking at this concept of the familiar past, um, it's a concept brought to the table by uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. You know, he's got a lot of good um, lectures, books. I've listened to some of his speeches, you know, YouTube shit. And um, I just recently started getting into his um, one of his audiobooks, I think it's Becoming Supernatural. It's about 11 hours. I only actually got through about half of it. I was going to get through the other half of it today, but I just wasn't feeling like that, you know, as I was painting, you know, because I was like painting a house and it was like somewhat cold and like I just wasn't in the mood for that. I was in the mood for um, something different. And but I, I still tried to keep the mindset uh, in a state of flow with that uh, idea in mind to kind of work on that throughout the day. And so um, with the familiar past, the way he kind of uh, describes it, it's the uh, kind of the same language as just these, um, these fear-based thoughts, the reactivity, um, the survival mode is the way he was kind of like uh, describing it. But it, it's, it's kind of in alignment with what, um, you know, we've talked about on this channel, other channels, but um, it's, it's about kind of, and I've even heard it in cognitive behavioral therapy. It's very similar kind of idea of being able to um, recognize the thought, being mindful and aware um, that you are not the thought, but you're the observer of the thought. And then in that same moment, instead of believing the same thought of um, reactivity or like, well, I did this in the past and this kept me safe from danger, so I'm just going to just live in this perpetual groundhog day and do things always the same way I've always done it, never growing, never expanding, actually kind of slowly uh, contracting, slowly starting, I feel like the dying process really, you know, when you stop evolving and, and exploring the unknown, it's almost like you're, you're starting to limit yourself and, and you're living in this feedback loop of um, unconsciously creating more and more fear and separation uh, by believing the uh, familiar past because we were all children of the matrix at one point you know we were all under this spell this this um, kind of this this world view that was kind of externally put on to us you know from our parents from culture from just society uh, the narratives that are going on in culture, um, all of these types of things. Not to say everything like that's bad. You know, like your parents did something like, like some fucked up thing. Some parents may not have been very good at being parents, but you know, as we get older, we can start to look at the beliefs and the the, uh, the assumptions that our parents taught us. Look how it affected their life down the line, how it's affecting our state of mind and choose whether or not we're going to continue to hold on to those beliefs or just let them go because they're not serving or real in any type of meaningful way. And so the concept of the familiar past has to do with navigating the here and now in the, the, the quantum field, as Joe Dispenza would describe it, but, you know, just being part of the connectedness of creation is another way to describe it. Um, but, you know, looking at what's happening in the here and now and and not getting caught in this this loop of oh what do I do next oh let's do the same thing I did before but being open to infinite intelligence to start to guide and direct not only your thoughts and your and your uh, in and bringing things to the surface of your consciousness to either let go of or hold on to or to grow or to expand but to act, just get in more of a like a receptive mode receiving mode partly by becoming more and more in a state of gratitude and not to get triggered by like gratitude because again the familiar past has definitions of what gratitude means and examples of what gratitude is based on an identity that is separate from others and separate from your creator and separate um, like a separate persona uh, like a brain in the body persona you know get, getting out of that kind of illusion of separation is putting on your new identity in Christ. And so unless you are 
kind of navigating the here and now from your identity in Christ, you're, you're ultimately falling back into the illusion, um, or not really so much the illusion, but falling back into the familiar past, which had a lot of beliefs of scarcity, beliefs of um, attack, uh, beliefs of fear and hysteria and, and worst case scenarios and punishment and suffering and not enoughness and guilt and shame and all of this kind of shit that we've, uh, like this baggage that we've picked up on the, the path to where we are now, which not to look at your past and then go, well, what it could have, should have, if I would have not had this thing play out, then I'd be um, in some imaginary future. And then again, you're getting trapped in those familiar past thoughts, which you know, a lot of times we can look at the past with this lens of, oh, nostalgia and everything was so rosy and everything else. Um, I, I noticed that, you know, I was, I was actually listening to some of like Dr. Drew. Um, he, his his energy is very calming to me, you know, for, for, for whatever reason, you know, it was like I grew up like listening to Loveline and, and I was just followed his progression I you know appreciate his point of view it's radically different than my point of view but you know I kind of like that you know he's able to demonstrate his point of view without becoming hysterical and like jumping to weird assumptions and, and weird claims and weird beliefs and everything else and by weird you know I just mean by contrast to seeing kind of like the uh, oh the uh, the group think dynamic that's been going on through COVID the uh, oh what is it the mass formation as a what's his name Desmond Professor Desmond was describing, I, I believe it's just another way of describing like the Antichrist spirit, as the Bible has like kind of demonstrated um, that kind of language and what that what that looks like and what that um, what the fruit of that is, which is biblically how you're supposed to start to discern um, things in reality is by the fruit that it bears and and. In metaphysics, the fruit, um, you know, it can be boiled down to a very simple dichotomy of fear or love. You know, both of those are, you know, in in the biggest perspective, you know, in the biggest step back, you know, it's like kind of part of the same dynamic. You know, it's like one is just like the absence of, you know, it's like darkness is an absence of light. So you just like you turn on the light and it's not like darkness is its own entity that has its own will. It's just what happens when the lights are off, you know, and so, um, you know, looking at, you know, you know, kind of that, that kind of understanding when it comes to, you know, light and dark, evil and, and all that kind of stuff, you know, so anyway, you know, so looking at Dr. Drew's kind of point and perspective on things, um, I, I find it very interesting, um, just medically, um, you know, his perspective versus like Dr. Joe Dispenza, and that's kind of how that, you mean, happened because of contrasting these two different doctors points of view and even in the medical community you, you're you're noticing a lot of this uh, observation of weird behavioral uh, things that people just doubling down and doubling down and doubling down you know which is uh, very common of the familiar past you know it's like oh um, well you know if I was happy with when I had this this um maybe uh, like a work goal or something like I just got a promotion I was really excited that was really thrilling and exciting and it's like well Kel, I'm gonna just double down and I'm just gonna work twice as hard I'm gonna get that next level promotion and then it's gonna even then, then I'll feel fulfilled and you made it in this utopia I experienced it in music with like these different milestones of like okay well the first time something I, I created and it was on the radio then it's like first time something was on TV then in a movie then my first like like broadcast royalties and then like then, then it like went to different publishing people even you know it's like oh well you know this is like a, a like a, a hot shit publisher and like music publisher and that like I signed with them and then I should have this utopia I made it moment and then I got a light you know I get a license you know and then they're starting to place shit and then it's like there, there's momentary satisfaction, but then like kind of the illusion is then to double down and it's like, well, if I just had more, then I could feel like a lasting peace and satisfaction or like abundant feeling where like most of the time in that familiar past, there's always this never, it's like nonstop desiring and this wanting for, um, you know, it's, it's actually wanting for like to express who you actually are. But, you know, part of like the familiar past is you're, you're actually not 
in alignment with who you are, you know, because you, you the belief in the in separation and and oh, you know, might is right and like oh, what's some more example? You know, there's so many examples. I mean, it's just this is the entire scripts that the pro that the Matrix offers, you know. Um, but moving into the unknown is recognizing that in the here and now there's these offers of the past from from your mind from from past thoughts and beliefs of what how would this present moment feel any better you know the familiar past comes in it's like well you know maybe you know it was fun when i did you know some drugs and it was fun when i uh you know pursued you know some fill in the blank you know whatever whatever your thing was well instead of like you know listening to the familiar past to guide your present moment state of consciousness you know, ask infinite intelligence to start to implant new ideas and new, like a new direction based on your identity in Christ, which is somewhat unknown. You know, it's like, oh, you know, we have an example, but, you know, demonstrating it in your own life experience is another thing. And so uh, getting into this, this unknown is in trusting the unfoldment then of what's happening now, what's happening now. Realizing everything that's happening now is being done to you according to this correspondence, this, me this metaphysical correspondence of, you know, you're, you're moving out of the familiar past, which then has a reflection uh, that's familiar. And even if it is you know, difficult, involves a lot of suffering, is chaotic, is dysfunctional, you know, a lot of times, you know, the unknown could be worse than that. And so the, the care of the familiar past is like, well, you've already endured what you've endured. Yeah, let's just create this Groundhog Day that's like gradually, you know, putting you more and more into this little box where you're not trying anything new. You're not really exploring anything anymore. You're doubling down on what you believe to be reality. And your, your mind is getting more and more close to new ideas. And at the same time, simultaneously, getting a lot of um, downloads and fucking uh, programming from external narratives, uh, things coming through the screen from people that are superior to you that are on this pedestal, yeah, you know, and it's a slow drifting into what I feel like is a state of death at the end of that um, descent. But you know, moving into the unknown with your creator involves, for one, trust. Then another, you know, important concept in that is to, um, when you feel the fear of moving to the unknown, whatever that is, that's that's the next step of something to be let go of or choose to to expand your own consciousness about a particular thing. So, for example, you know, say it's hard for you to have, like, you have trust issues because you've lived a very trauma-filled life. You know, it's hard to some, you know, okay, well, I'm just going to trust everything to something I can't see to what love me, you know, or give give me a better life, or, or what are you trying to say, Mike? You know, so it's like, you know, getting to a point where you can spend right now feeling either joy, peace, you know, an elevated state of consciousness, gratitude, you know, and by gratitude, you know, that has to do, I feel like, and just knowing that what you were holding on in your inner state is then correspondence, um, is externalized like a big mirror. And it's like the more that you just know that it's like, I, I kind of a gratitude kind of come search to come in that doesn't have an opposite where like the, uh, the old familiar past Gratitude had to do with receiving, but then the flip side of that is then when that's stripped and taken from you, then there's you know, loss and pain and, and longing and more more mental fucking just chitter chatter in the mind. But you know, moving into the unknown of who you are in Christ is a you know a surrendering of a, a lot of that kind of familiar past thinking, starting to take what what is being done to you in the here and now. And looking at it from an assumption that um, you are blessed and not cursed is maybe the easiest way to start to get you into the new uh, being that you are in Christ is, you know, instead of listening to the familiar past and being reactive to whatever life has to, whatever, you know, is being brought to you in the here and now to either, you know, observe, to, to maybe 
do something who knows you know what's being you know what how it's all being orchestrated but you know whatever it is you know instead of being reactive and hysterical like the um the familiar past you know used to be oh how do i'm going to react to this um oh uh did you did you hear the news mike you know the stock market is is definitely tanking and the dollar is just just is ready to be it's good it's monopoly money again and it's like I don't, I don't, I don't give a shit what the, the the screen is trying to get me to do, you know, because so much of that, when you're conscious, you start to see it for what it is, and so much of what people are hysterical about are, are actually opportunities to either, you know, if you have a business to provide a service that that solves that problem. And in solving that problem by helping others, by serving others, you get rewarded, you know, for one in cash, you know, you get, you know, you get that connection of energy, that energy exchange. But then you also start to level up in consciousness and your faith starts to grow to a, to a knowing where, you know, any types of fear based thinking from the familiar past start to be like immediately recognized as like, oh, I can, I, I, that was um, a familiar past thought, you know, I would normally, you know, either try to uh, plot and scheme, you know, I'm going to figure something out, maybe attack the problem, I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to do, instead of, you know, getting into the, the, new, the new being that you are in Christ and realizing that God's in control of everything, nothing's impossible for God to do, God's going to do it through you on some level, you know, and that everything that you need to be successful is going to be brought to you. So, you know, start saying yes to life as things start to happen in the here and now. And that's, that's one of the things, too, when, when these things start to manifest is to not be reactive um, the way you used to be when anything would happen. It'd be like, um, I'm triggered uh, that something fearful is going to happen because any change from my Groundhog Day is dangerous. You know, my prison, I, I, I have my routine don't fuck with my routine that keeps me safe and yeah I might not be doing much of anything anymore besides just like like existing but you know, at least that's better than con perpetually suffering and getting getting out of those kind of mindsets getting in more of a flow state in the here and now you know realizing that everything is being brought to your attention deliberately as part of um, creation it just it, nothing is an accident or coincidence everything is serving a function and has a spiritual reason behind it and in that knowing you can start to have a little bit more fun with your day with the here and now um you know instead of like oh every time the phone rings oh there's some elaborate story oh that's a bill collector oh you know maybe that's a you know a customer that wants to yell at me oh maybe maybe this is bad news maybe somebody's hurt maybe somebody's in the hospital oh you know whatever the story is that's putting you in a fear state of like the phone in any of those familiar past kinds of assumptions and thinking None of that was, oh, I'm connected to this event. I'm connected to what's going on right now. Everything is, is working together for the, my good. I don't need to, con you know, brace myself for worst case scenarios. I should, because I, I'm blessed. I'm blessed right now. I'm falling into that old familiar past where I was cursed instead of embracing. I'm, how, how does a blessed, how does a blessed person respond when the phone rings? Oh, maybe more excitement. Maybe something awesome is happening on the other end of the phone. Maybe you won a prize. Maybe, you know, somebody, you know, was really impacted by something you did for them and they were calling just to, you know, say thank you. Who knows? There's a myriad of things that could be. Um, but assuming the worst case scenario is, you know, still obeying the law of assumption in the sense that then then you get rewarded with a lot of drama and chaos if you're perpetually in the familiar past of expecting suffering expecting curses you know that's, that's that's then what you unconsciously start to manifest onto yourself so in the uh, the new uh being that you are in christ you know start saying yes when these things happen when when anything hits your attention that's um maybe an maybe an offer to do something look at everything as being some sort of bridge to manifesting more and more of this um, reflection of um, the body of Christ, you know, seeing more and more of that physically in your own perception as a tangible reality more and more every day. You know, so every day becomes more and more hopeful and exciting the more that you're tangibly seeing as the, the perception is starting to become 
like aware of what already is because it is already like that you know and it's only through the testing that you'll experience that but you know when you're in the familiar past of suffering and, and um, curse you know being cursed you know and then oh mike well you know jesus said to to bear your own cross and follow him it's like okay i get that but you know where is jesus now is jesus still on the cross suffering and dying being murdered perpetually in the here and now or did you know he eventually come off the cross and you know be the resurrected christ you know the living one that the bible describes as resurrecting within you on some level that we're still understanding what that means but i feel like the more that you connect with um jesus within you and start to realize that you're connected the the more externally then you start to see the body of christ then become more and more of a tangible reality you know and so and that's something that you can put to the test it's something i see you know it's like you know, it, it's easier and easier to vibe in flow in the here and now, you know, in flow, probably the easiest way I could define that for somebody, because it's like, you know, everybody's got these familiar past kind of definitions for flow. What does flow mean? Are you talking about, you know, some Kung Fu shit or, you know, what are you talking about? You know, and it's like when you're playing like an instrument, for example, you know, I think like a kind of an attribute of music that maybe like somewhat un like subconscious is the fact that you know the the beat gets you very present into what is happening right now in reality and not only that but then there's a like a sync you know, almost synchronizes people into the connectedness as you all connect your attention onto what's going on now and that rhythmic pattern starts to I, I feel like um, have an influence on your state of mind, you know, and, and with that, you know, looking at, um, you know, music and flow, it's almost like when you're really engaged with playing the guitar, for example, it's almost like you're, there, there is not thought that you're not thinking about like messing up. You're not thinking about, Oh, did they hear this mistake? And actually when you do start to get these kind of criticisms, this inner critic bullshit going on, that's actually, you know, then, if you believe that that's a possibility, then then it's almost like then you start to fuck up a little bit, you know. But, but like the more that you're in flow, the more that you're just really engaged with the, the here and now. But your attention is also just focused on what's going on around me, what's going on, and as you know, what, it, it's really about focusing your attention onto the here and now. And so um, th that's what I mean by kind of a flow state, where it's like maybe if you're played sports and you're just in the zone, like like throwing like free throws you're just fucking sinking them because you're not in your mind like oh i hope i don't miss this you know I, we're down by one this will this will this is the game right here oh i fucking dinged it i fucked it up you know it's like you know so much of that is a correspondence too to the, the that mental limiting beliefs and assumptions and this this inner critic that you can start to choose to listen to um the the voice that the the spirit you know, which is your teacher, you know, the voice of peace, um, and, and that teacher is within you. And so, again, part of the um, the familiar past is always looking outside of yourself for some expert that knows what's going on better, what, what oh, this guru, he's really fucking got it figured out, you know, and let's, let's, let's listen to what they got to say, and like they're, like they're on this pedestal when, you know, the same teacher within them is the same teacher within you. It's just it's just about recognizing it more and more and listening to it more and more. And, and the the kind of the, the best way to do that is by expressing newness in the here and now, not re reacting like you did in the familiar past. And you know another uh, thing you can start to do that that really is helpful to put on the the new identity in Christ is um, when something happens outside of yourself some event or conversation relationship whatever to to um, to catch when you drift into the like, familiar past thinking and going choosing okay I'm new what's a new thought about this and just ask God for a new thought you know and and don't be surprised actually you know, believe that you can do that and receive that you know and as you receive that then um it starts to resonate with with your your inner guidance system and everything else and as you start to put on more of a um a mindset 
that corresponds to true thinking to um yeah, maybe true thinking is the best way to describe that. You know, then, then you start to see that being demonstrated more and more outside of you. And then you start to demonstrate um, different um, things. The more uh, you're able to level up your consciousness, there's a correspondence then that demonstrates that leveling up in consciousness in a physical way that others can see. And they can start to um, be like, damn, I didn't know that you, that was possible. And then then they 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 take it up the next level and it just happens like that you know it's like people start leveling up it's like what, what was that the four minute mile i don't i don't remember i don't really pay attention to track and field <laughs> but you know it's like say the, the the four minute mile that stands out as something you know no one thought that was possible until all of a sudden somebody demonstrated that it was possible and now that's common that people can do that it's the same type of thing of like demonstration by leveling up your consciousness and, and believing that it's even possible and with God all things are possible so you know really there is no limit besides the limit that you choose to put on to things but you know with that being said I think I'm about so you know, thanks everybody for liking sharing subscribing all the social networking things appreciate your spiritual support and your physical support thank you for that and until the next now uh, God bless